So this right here is a bipolar junction transistor, which is a pretty common kind of transistor. Uh, and this particular one is an NPN transistor. And so this transistor is made up of uh, three layers of silicon, like this. And maybe, maybe you can guess what it means for it to be uh, an NPN transistor. These two layers of silicon are N-type, and this layer here is P-type, so NPN. And if you haven't watched my previous video where I, where I go into uh, quite a bit of detail about what these N-type and P-type silicon is, you should definitely go back and watch that. Otherwise, the rest of this isn't going to make a whole ton of sense. And so this is an NPN transistor, and they make PNP transistors as well, but we'll, we'll just talk about NPN for now. And so this here is the circuit diagram for a transistor, and it's got the three leads coming off of it. There's a emitter, a base, and a collector. And if you look at the actual physical transistor, there's three leads coming off, and this is the emitter, the middle one is the base, and this is the collector, although that's not really standardized, but in this particular case, that's how it, how it works. And what a transistor does is it is a current-controlled switch. And so what that means is that if we establish a, a small current from the base to the emitter in this direction, the transistor will switch on and it will allow a very large current to flow from the collector to the emitter. Um, and sometimes you can also use this as an amplifier because a small current is amplified into a large current flow here. And so first off, there's, there's actually something kind of confusing about the way this, this diagram is drawn with this arrow like this, which is that in, in a circuit diagram, and a, and a lot of times, a lot of engineers like to think about positive current flow, which is current flowing from positive to negative, when in reality, it's the electrons that flow from negative to positive. And, and it doesn't really matter which, which convention we use, because you know, as long as there's current flowing in one direction or the other, the current will have the same effect. Um, but when we, when we start to, to actually look at what's going on inside the transistor, it's, it's easier to think of this in terms of the direction that the electrons are flowing instead of the, the conventional direction. Um, and so, so really what's going on in here, um, even though the arrow is pointing this way and we think of current flowing that way, in reality, the electrons are flowing from the emitter to the base. And so we'll just turn all of this around for, for this discussion here. Um, and so to kind of restate what it is that the transistor does, um, in terms of electron flow is that um, a small uh, flow of electrons from the emitter to the base will turn the transistor on and allow a large flow of electrons from the emitter to the collector. Um, so if we look at it uh, in, in, this, in this scenario, um, this piece of, of n-type material might be, might be the emitter. This middle p-type is the base. And then this, this n-type material over here is the collector. And so what we're, what we're going to do with the transistor is that um, we're going to try to put a bunch of electrons in over on this side, and we want to get them out over on this side. But uh, if the transistor is off, then we're not going to get that current flow. And in order to turn the transistor on, what we want to do is get a small current flowing through the emitter and out the base like this. And once we get that, uh, that small current flowing, then the transistor will turn on, we'll have a large amount of current able to flow all the way through it. So let's re redraw this so we can, uh, can kind of get a, a closer look at what's really going on in here. So if we take a closer look at what's going on in here, we've got uh, the emitter here, which is n-type material, and so we have these extra electrons that are in here that are free to, to kind of move around. We've got the base, which is p-type material, and so we have these these holes that are in here that are free to move around. Uh, and then the collector is, is also n-type, and so there's electrons that are free to move around. Um, but at each of these uh, p-n junctions, uh, remember we, we have this depletion region, which I've kind of exaggerated here. But we have this depletion region because the electrons from the n-type material are going to fill in some of the holes in the p-type material and kind of neutralize each other. Uh, and so there are no charge carriers in these, in these depletion regions in here. And so what happens is if we want to uh, try to get a, a current to flow through this thing, you know, maybe we'll hook up, um, uh, let, me, let me move up here. If we hook up a battery here uh, just across the, the whole transistor from the emitter uh, to the, the collector, and so this is the negative terminal, this is the positive terminal, and we're going to be thinking about electron flow here. Um, the negative terminal of the battery is, is going to kind of uh, inject some, some uh, electrons in, into here. You know, this is going to become a little bit more 
are a little bit negatively charged. So there's going to be a few more electrons that, that enter this area, and some of them might even kind of creep into this uh, depletion region a bit if we get enough electrons to come in here. Um, but it, but we don't have a current flow here. We don't, we're not drawing, uh, we're not, we're not, you know, drawing electrons out of the base and adding more holes here. So we're not, we're not going to see that diode action here because we don't have a, um, you know, that that 0.6 volt differential between the the, the emitter and the base yet. Um, so so we might have some more electrons coming in here, but nothing nothing crazy is going to happen here. Um, at the same time, you know, some of the electrons that are in the collector are going to be attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery, and so we'll we'll lose some of these electrons um, that are going to get kind of attracted to the battery. Um, so really, nothing nothing too exciting has happened here yet. Um, no no current is flowing, that's for sure. But now, what happens when we try to turn on the transistor? So when we try to turn on the transistor, what we're going to do is we're going to try to apply a small current from the emitter to the base. And so we might have, uh, you know, a small battery down here that we connect to the across the emitter and the base. And so now, if we just look at the emitter and the base, it looks like we have we have a diode, and we've we we're kind of uh, trying to get current to flow through it in the in the forward direction, what we call forward biasing this diode. Uh, and so what's going to happen is the same thing that we saw when we looked at the the diode in the, in in the previous video. Uh, electrons are going to are going to come into the emitter here, um, uh, and we're also going to draw electrons out of the base. And so, um, when we draw electrons out of the base, we're adding holes here to to the base. Um, and as long as we get about 0.6 or 0.7 volts uh, of current flowing in this direction, so if this is greater than about 0.7 volts, I think for for most transistors, um, then we're going to start actually getting getting current flow, and so these electrons are going to get you know close enough here that this depletion this depletion region will will um, will shrink to the point where we now have charge carriers um, all the way through here, and so we can carry a charge all the way through. So now this is this is where things get really interesting. So we've we've got a bunch of things going on here, right? So first we've got lots of electrons entering the the emitter over here from um, you know, from this battery here. Um, but also, we've got electrons entering from this battery here. Second thing that's going on is the, the emitter part of the, of the uh, transistor, uh, the way they manufacture these is, is the emitter is really heavily doped. Um, so there's, there's a relatively higher concentration of, of those phosphorus atoms here. So there's, there's a lot of those extra electrons that are free to move around anyway. So there's, there's actually a lot of electrons in here just, just to start with. Uh, just just the way they manufacture the the transistor, and and so all of this means that once this emitter to base current gets going, this this current this way uh, uh, gets going, we've got a lot of of electrons here that are just going to start wandering into this base. Or I think the the technical term is diffusing. Um, so we're going to have a lot of electrons that are going to start diffusing into this base, um, and some of them are going to fill in these holes, um, and and a few of them are going to are going to come out uh, down here. Um, but there's there's something really interesting, which is this base is really thin. Um, that's the key. If this base were really thick, then you know they would all just flow uh, down this way. But because the base is really thin, they're kind of close to to this air this area in here. And if you remember when we looked at the the way the depletion region uh, forms, the way the depletion region forms is there were electrons that were over here that went over here to fill in holes. And so this area, because the electrons have left, is positively charged. So there's this positive charge that happens here because we've got those uh, those phosphorus atoms that, that were here. You know, they used to have an extra electron and they still have an extra proton, but that extra electron has gone over here. So there's this positive charge here and there's there's a negative charge here as well to kind of offset that when that's where the electrons went. But we have all these electrons that are just diffusing into the base. So lots of electrons are coming in kind of this way. Um, and all these electrons that are bunched up, they're going to get they're going to get uh, just attracted to this positive charge, and so a lot of these electrons will actually just sort of um, you know scoot right through this depletion region um, and get attracted here. And then of course once they enter the collector, um, you know they're 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 free to wander around just because you know just the same way as any of these other electrons are free to wander around. And of course there's this positive terminal of this battery that's going to attract electrons out here, um, and so you get this this action where you know, you've got all these electrons bunched up over here, 
that are being drawn into the base by this little current. And once those electrons end up in the base, there's this really strong positive charge that's really close because the base is thin. I mean, the key here is that the base is, is really, really thin the way they manufacture it. Um, and so these electrons get drawn to this positive charge. Um, you know, they're already kind of moving this way and they just get drawn right across. And then once they're in the collector, they're perfectly happy to wander around here and they, and they uh, continue on. And so with a really thin base, most of the electrons are actually going to make that, make that leap through this depletion region um, and, and complete this circuit. And so just this small amount of, of current going this way, just enough to kind of get rid of this depletion region in here, um, combined with the fact that you've got lots of electrons coming in from here, lots of electrons coming in from here, and the emitter, the way they manufacture it, is, is heavily doped. So there's already a lot of electrons in here. Um, you know, as soon as they, as soon as you close this depletion region and they start, uh, start moving into the, diffusing into this base, um, you know, because it's so thin, because you've got this positive charge here, most of them, 99% um, of these electrons actually are going to get swept uh, into the collector um, and complete this circuit. And so just a small current here results in a very large current going through the transistor. And, um, and that's how the transistor works as a, as a current controlled switch. Uh, so this small uh, current flow here um, turns on the transistor and allows a very large um, current flow from the collector to the uh, from the emitter to the collector.